Greetings booktubers and welcome back to Grammaticus Books. Welcome back to an unusual edition of Grammaticus Books because today we're doing a response video. And I, I don't normally do response videos, but I had an event happen here on the channel that just sort of took on a life of its own and, and pretty much warranted a response in my opinion. And what that event was is I did a video approximately two months ago on Robert E. Heinlein. And in that video, I mentioned Starship Troopers. And I talked about how Heinlein had set up this government where the only people in this Terran Federation that could vote, could cast a vote and earn their franchise, which is the term for voting that Heinlein uses repeatedly, were military veterans who had completed their term of service. And immediately I just got a staggering number of comments in the comment section of people saying, yes, that is correct. But in addition to military veterans, you could also vote as per Heinlein in Starship Troopers if you had served in the Terran Federation, but served in a non-military uh, government function as a civilian, say as like a, a Terran Federation's equivalent of an accountant in the IRS, that as long as you had skin in the game and had gone and volunteered in order to serve the government, that you too had earned the right to vote. And uh, simply put, this is a misconception. It, it's not correct. Um, and it was so widespread, and not only on the comments section of my channel, but also all out across the internet, that I thought it warranted looking into it and showing why it is a misconception, why it's so easy to arrive at this misconception, and then go through all the points showing why it was exclusively military veterans who had completed their service, who could vote as per Heinlein, as per uh, Starship Troopers. So that's what we're going to do. But before we start into it, I need to put up two disclaimers. The first disclaimer is we're talking about Starship Troopers by Heinlein which is his most political book. It is an absolute political lightning rod. This is not a political discussion. I am not advocating for Robert E. Heinlein's politics in the book. I am not advocating against Robert E. Heinlein's politics in the, in the book. Um, the entirety of this conversation is just to determine uh, who can or couldn't vote in, in Heinlein's Terran Federation as per what he put in the book, Starship Troopers. End of story. That's it. No politics. All the politics are put aside. That's the first disclaimer. The second disclaimer is, is that this is in no way, shape, or form a knock on the people who put a comment down in the section saying that, you know, civilian uh, federal employees, federation employees uh, could also earn a vote. In no way, shape, or form am I faulting you. I almost did this myself. It's an extremely easy misconception to arrive at based on a number of factors. So please, please, please don't construe this uh, um, as finding fault or, or knock against anybody who put that down there. Um, what I'm hoping this is, it will be, it'll be educational in order to arm you with the information that if this argument comes up again, you can turn around and I can point you to specific chapters and pages where you can absolutely lay this uh, argument to rest and, uh, and have the ammunition to do so. Uh, but that's it. Let's go ahead. Let's get into it. So what are the factors in this book that have created such a, a, a misconception, a misunderstanding about who can and can vote in, in the book Starship Troopers? And they're numerous, and we're going to go through them. And the first one is, is the sheer volume of page real estate that Robert A. Heinlein dedicates in this book to talking about voting in a variety of methods and contexts. There's just an inordinate, very large number of passages in, in here dealing directly with the practice of voting. And unless you have an eidetic memory, uh, you're never going to be able to keep it all in line and, in, and straight in your head. And God forbid she'd be trying to come back to this book, you know, years after having read it and trying to keep all this stuff straight. It would be nearly impossible. I had a difficult time doing it, even just after two weeks having expired when I had read the book to when I did the video. It was even difficult for me. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that at no point during his expoundings upon uh, voting within the book does he lay out a uh, Terran Federation code of regulations where he spells out exactly, you know, under TF, uh, TFCR 1801-B, here's who can vote and under what circumstances they can vote. Instead, it's all done via a dialogue between characters in a conversational format, and that makes it a little harder to parse out as well. The other reason is the word service. Uh, Robert Heinlein uses the word service repeatedly through the book in reference to um, voting, and he uses the term military service, but he varies it up. In order to you know, not become repetitive, 
He uses sometimes the term military service when he's talking about who can vote, and sometimes he drops the military and he just uses the word service. But he still means military service, and that's clear when you read the whole sentence and the whole paragraphs. But as you're looking back at this book, with the intervening years in between, people will remember the service, and sometimes I think they're forgetting the military part and that military association, and that's also causing some confusion. The other thing that also can lead people to the, a wrong conclusion on this is that um, there is one uh, line in here in particular, there's one sentence that I think people seize on and it gets taken and used in, a, in an incorrect manner. And in that sentence, Robert E. Heinlein talks about auxiliary services and how people in non-combatant auxiliary services still earn the right to vote. That is half of the sentence. And they remember that part of the sentence, but they've forgotten the front half of that sentence, which clarifies that very, very well. And I'm gonna read that sentence here uh, shortly and show you guys how that sentence actually is very specific and it's about the military. But they remember that portion about non-combatant auxiliary services, that's the exact wording, still earning the right to vote. And then they associate that with the word service and then all of a sudden they've arrived at the conclusion that you could work in the government outside of the uh, military and still earn the right to vote. And, and it's false, it, it, it doesn't work. And then the last thing that's compounding all of this is the internet. Because if you go out on the internet and you search for who can vote Starship Troopers, Robert A. Heinlein, you are gonna hit site after site after site that is going to misquote the book, that is going to arrive at the same um, misperception of who could vote and reinforce that. And then people see that and they get it into their head that they think that that's correct. And it, and it absolutely isn't correct. So that's the reasons that it can be very confusing. It's the reasons that a large number of people have arrived at this misconception, why I nearly arrived at it myself. But I hear you saying, well, prove it, prove to me that it's only military veterans who could earn the right to vote Grammaticus. And the devil's in the details, you're correct. So we're gonna go through this piece by piece. I'm gonna show you what I did, how I did it, and then outline for you all the passages that clearly and unambiguously show that Robert A. Heinlein intended the vote only for veterans who had completed their term of service. So what did I do? Well, I have this physical copy here, but I also have an electronic copy. And I went out and uh, I worked smarter, not harder, and I did keyword searches in my electronic copy of Starship Troopers. And I put in three words to vote, to uh, search for. I put in franchise, I put in voting, and I put in vote. And now the word vote is gonna pick up vote, voters, voted, votes. It's gonna pick up any variation of it because those all contain the letters V-O-T-E. So I hit every single instance in the book where Robert E. Heinlein is talking about voting by doing those keyword searches in this electronic copy. And franchise came up 15 times, the word voting came up three times, and the word vote or a derivation of vote came up 19 times. However, one of those derivations was the letters V-O-T-E contained within the word pivot or pivoted so we can throw that one out. And what we're left with is this group of, uh, of, of hits now. You've got 19 for vote, you've got three for voting, you've got 15 for franchise. And of these words, they're, they're used by Heinlein in three broad contexts, three broad themes. And the first theme is where he's talking about voting rights uh, back in old Earth, in old Earth as uh, seen from the perspective of the Terran Federation in the future. And what he's really talking about, he's talking about the United States in the 1950s and how voting worked in the 1950s in the U.S. So we're not concerned with that. So we can take all of those hits and just push them aside. The second group that he talks about is he's talking about voting from like a thousand foot perspective just the general idea of voting and what voting is and what voting represents. And again, we're not concerned with this either. So we can take all of those hits and we can push them aside. And that leaves us with the third category. And the third category is where he's using these words, franchise voting and vote, where it's directly related to the Terran Federation and how it applies to the Terran Federation. And this is what we are interested in. Well, that was annoying. I had a phone call came in right in the middle of the video and it disrupted the video. So coming back, we were talking about the devil in the details and where the passages are in the book with all those keyword search hits uh, that demonstrate that the vote was only confined um, to, only given to uh, veterans who completed their term of service. 
and we're going to go through them here. And uh, just never fear, I'm going to go through these uh, very quickly, but very concisely, and it won't take that long at all. Um, I'll keep it very brief and to the point. So the first uh, instance of page appears on page 45. Uh, if you've got your hard copy, this will not work. The page numbers will not line up, um, possibly if you're using an electronic copy. My electronic copy and my hard copy pages, they did not correspond. But this, So this is all with the uh, hard copy. And on hard copy, we're on page 45 at the bottom of it. So page 45 at the bottom. Uh, you usually didn't know why a man left unless you saw him leave from the military. And he volunteered the information, but some of them got fed up and said so loudly and resigned, forfeiting forever their chances of franchise. And again, franchise means vote. So if you left the military, you've uh, forfeited your ability to vote forever. You cannot get it back. You could only get it through the military. Uh, that's on page 45. Uh, the next instance appears on page 64, and it's uh, right here about the uh, top half of top half of page 64. And this is that, uh, that paragraph. Uh, Ted had made a bad mistake, one that lasted all of half a second. And it really had been just a mistake too, because while he hated the outfit, who liked it? Um, he had been trying to sweat it out and win his franchise. Again, franchise, the ability to vote. He meant to go into politics. He talked a lot about how when he got his citizenship, there will be some changes made, you wait and see. While he would never be in public office now, he had taken his finger off of his number for a single instant and he was through. So he makes a mistake, he gets discharged out of the military. Not only can he not vote because he's been discharged out of the military, he can never hold public office because in addition to uh, getting the vote with citizenship, you had to have been in the military in order to even hold public office. So that's page 64. Uh, the next one is on page 129. It's up here at the top of page 129, if you're following along, along I should say. Uh, Ace got into a card game shortly after and lent me some money, and I went for a walk. I needed to think. Go career? Quite aside from that noise about a commission, did I want to go career? Why, had, why, I, had, why I had gone through all this to get my franchise, hadn't I? And if I went career, I was just as far away from the privilege of voting as if I had never enrolled. And again, it's just relating um, the privilege of voting to enrolling in the military and exclusively to the military. So the next one we do is on page 145. So let's flip over to that. So here we are on the bottom of page 145 and that's gonna wrap around to the top of page 146. And again, this is just for the hard copy. Superficially, our system is only slightly different. We have democracy, unlimited by race, color, creed, birth, wealth, sex, or conviction. And anyone may win sovereign power by a usually short and not too arduous term of service, nothing more than a light workout to our caveman ancestors. But that slight difference is one between a system that works since it is constructed to match the facts and one that is inherently unstable since sovereign franchise, sovereign franchise just means the right to vote, is the ultimate in human authority. We ensure that all, all who wield it accept the ultimate in social responsibility. We, we require each person who wishes to exert control over his state to wager his own life and lose it, if need be, in order to save the life of the state. The maximum responsibility a human can accept is thus equated to the ultimate authority a human can exert. And that's a very important statement right there. In order to get the vote, you had to be able to, you had to be willing to volunteer for military service and willingly put your, your life in a uh, position where you might lose it in combat in the military in order to earn, earn the right to vote, in order to get your sovereign franchise. And this is important because it demonstrates that you as an individual are willing to subjugate your own personal safety below that of the, uh, the well-being and the good of the state. And only people who are willing to do this, willing to potentially sacrifice their lives, were then rewarded with the ultimate authority, which according to Heinlein was the ability to vote, which was the, exer the exertion of political force. So if you're working in the civilian equivalent of the Terran Federation's uh, IRS as an accountant, you have not done that. You're not putting your life in danger driving to your accounting job uh, at the uh, Washington DC equivalent of the IRS headquarters. It doesn't happen. You're, you're, your trip there is the most hazardous thing you're doing in your commute to and from work. And you're doing the same commute that all of your other civilian 
uh, counterparts are doing outside of uh, their government jobs. So that's the very important uh, quote there. That's on page 146. And then we have on page 164, and we're getting very close to the end. Bear with me. Page 164, you can't buy an MI, mobile infantry. You can't conscript him. You can't coerce him. You can't even keep him if he wants to leave. He can quit 30 seconds before a drop, lose his nerve and not get into his capsule. And all that happens is, is, that, is that he gets paid off and he can never vote. And again, it's just equating the vote to military service, which you can quit at any time. It's voluntary. Um, so you can't be conscripted into it. And then the last time that it appears in here is on page 145. And this is probably the two most important uh, sentences in the book. So page 145 at the top of it, and then here page 145 at the bottom of it. Sally didn't tell it by the book. Finally, Major Reed cut him off. Bring a summary to class tomorrow. 3,000 words, Mr. Solomon. Can you give me a reason, not historical nor theoretical, but practical, why the franchise is today limited to discharged veterans? Let me repeat that. Why the franchise is today limited to discharged veterans? And that is crystal, crystal clear. Only discharged veterans had the franchise the right to vote in the Terran Federation of Starship Troopers, as written by Robert A. Heinlein. And then down below, we have another very important sentence, probably the second most important sentence. And it is, and, have, and you have forgotten that in peacetime, most veterans come from non-combatant auxiliary services and have not been subjected to the full rigors of military discipline. They have merely been harried, overworked, and endangered. Yet their votes count. And this is the sentence that I think causes the most problems and the most um, misconstrued uh, ideas regarding this vote and the Terran Federation. Because people take that non-combatant auxiliary services and they're still their votes count and they drop off the front half of that sentence. And let me read the front half of the sentence. And again, this is the same sentence. And you have, for, you have forgotten that in peacetime, most veterans come from non-combatant auxiliary services and have not been subjected to the full rigors of military discipline. They have merely been harried, overworked, and endangered, yet their votes count. And what he's talking about there is they still volunteered for military service. And even though it's peacetime and there aren't as many people in the teeth and the claw end of the military, there's far more people back in the logistical end. The fact that they could uh, have a war break out at any time and they, knowing that, still volunteered for that service still put themselves into a possible position where they could have their lives on the line. So even though they worked in the, uh, on the auxiliary services and non-combat role during peacetime, there are still veterans who put themselves in that position and therefore they still get the vote, but it's as veterans. And I do think that that is the line that causes the most confusion and the one that people seize on and take out of context and leave off the front half of that sentence and then misconstrue it. But as you can see with the full sentence there, it's clearly defined only to military veterans. And Highland says so very specifically at the top of that page 145, that only discharged military veterans had the right to vote in the franchise. So now you have the knowledge, you can go forth and conquer. If this comes up here in a discussion, you're on the internet and this discussion comes up, you're at work and it comes up, I've handed you a whole handful of arrows you can put into your quiver, you can pull them out and you can direct these uh, arrows to, uh, to your debate, your opponents in your debate. I would just say, be nice, be polite about it. Take those broadhead uh, razor blade arrowheads off and replace them with nerve heads and be, be polite in your conversation, but politely direct them to these points where it shows that clearly it's only the, uh, the military veterans who could vote. And I really enjoyed putting this video together. I hope you guys take it in the spirit it was intended. And that is just to clear up what is a, clearly a very, very broad and widespread misconception about the vote and Starship Troopers. I really enjoyed putting this together. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And I'm gonna wrap this up with a quote from uh, the old G.I. Joe cartoon because I think it's very appropriate, uh, today's conversation about the mobile infantry and Starship Troopers. And as per uh, G.I. Joe, and now you know, and knowing is half the battle. And with that, I'm gonna say, take care, be safe, and I'll catch you guys next time.